So Dr. Rao, thinking through some um, treatment options that don't involve medication, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, gut-directed hypnotherapy or cognitive behavioral therapy for IBSC? So cognitive behavioral therapy, you know, there has been evidence for over 30 years gradually accumulating over time. And now there is significant new evidence that even short CBT, four, six sessions, as opposed to the long, which is usually 12 sessions, is very helpful. And there is new evidence now using phone apps and mobile phone apps, et cetera, where patients can download these apps and practice uh, cognitive behavioral therapy steps at home. So I do believe that these uh, method of treatment can be very effective in managing some of our challenging IBS patients. Some of the other, other fascinating areas I think are really um, uh, in terms of um, managing these people is, you know, for years we have talked about hypnotherapy. I very clearly remember um, a famous um, gastroenterologist um, called Peter Worwell, Professor Worwell from Manchester. He's a good friend of mine now. And, and he demonstrated this hypnotherapy uh, in an IBS patient on stage uh, in front of an audience of over 100 people. And that the person who he hypnotized was actually his own admin assistant who apparently has IBS, who also happens to be his patient. Dr. Vorbel has gone on and published some very high quality studies in Lancet and others showing this hypnotherapy works. The challenge has been that, you know, uh, you and I are not good at, at, at doing this because we are not trained, but we're seeing those patients who may potentially benefit. It's not like a, like a tenapinor or, or a, a placanotide drug that we can give. So how do we translate this potential therapeutic benefit into something that is more pragmatic and practical to the user? So what I was intrigued and learned just in the last one year or so are some new apps that have come on board. I believe there are two or three, and I don't mean to really um, you know, put down any one particular app or anything like that if I don't remember everything. But the, the concept is what I'd like to discuss is that there are some new wonderful tools which are patient-centric and which really the patient does not have to go and see a physician or a psychologist or somebody, but they can be at home and, and use this knowledge, which has now been nicely distilled into an app form, and they do modules on a daily basis, and it takes, takes them through multiple steps of how to relax, how to reduce stress, how to concentrate on improving you know, gut function, and how to calm the gut, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I mean, and some of the data, early data is really fascinating here. So, but the fact that we, someone has taken the pain and the time to develop something that is user-friendly and patients can do it at home, to me is a significant advance. Um, I was gonna ask you too, so you mentioned that you saw your, um, I guess one of your mentors in training, kind of uh, you saw them um, practice like a hypnotherapy session. So that was a while ago, probably. So that I think the concept that some of my patients are hesitant to consider this as an option, but I think once we kind of recognize that this has been around for a while, that it's not a new, you know, concern. Oh, it's been, it. I'm telling you this, this I saw was 1985. Right. So that's 22 plus 15, 37 years ago. <laughs> yeah. So oh, that's wow. when Peter Bowl demonstrated this. Right. So I mean, it's long time. That's great. Um, what about uh, fecal microbiota transplantation? I know we use this for C. diff. What are some thoughts about using this for patients with IBSC? Excellent. So the FMT or fecal microbiota transplantation, the fundamental basis is that there is altered gut microbiome. And when the microbiome is not normal, either there is increase of certain um, unwanted bacteria or decrease in uh, certain uh, wanted bacteria, that altered flora causes uh, bowel dysfunction and manifests as IBS. So if we can restore that by uh, providing healthy donor stool and replenish the, un the missing bacteria, et cetera, gut function can be restored to a more normal level. 
And based on that, there is some new evidence, um, even short-term and long-term evidence in a trial just been published showing that fecal microbiota transportation can provide both short-term and long-term improvement in IBS symptoms. That's wonderful.